Hi everyone, we're going to start back up with um, chapter 2, finishing that off. We were on page 34. She flipped a few pages, the gathering hall clock, she read, measures the hours of night and day. It must never be allowed to run down. Without it, how would we know when to go to work and when to go to school? How would the light director know when to turn the lights on and when to turn them off again? It is the job of the timekeeper to wind the clock every week and to place the date sign in Harkin Square every day. The timekeeper must perform these duties faithfully. Lena knew that not all timekeepers were as faithful as they should be. She'd heard of one some years ago who often forgot to change the date sign so that it might say Wednesday, week 38, year 227 for several days in a row. There'd even been timekeepers who forgot to wind the clock so that it might stand at noon or at midnight for hours at a time, causing a very long day or a very long night. The result was that no one really knew anymore exactly what day of the week it was or exactly how many hours it had been since the building of the city. They called this year the year 241, but it might have been 245 or 239 or 250. As long as the clock's deep boom rang out every hour and the lights went on and off more or less regularly, it didn't seem to matter. Lena left the book and examined the pictures of the mayors. The seventh mayor, Pod Morthwart, was her great, great, she didn't know how many greats, grandfather. He looked quite dreary, Lena thought. His cheeks were long and hollow, his mouth turned down at the corners, and there was a lost look in his eyes. The picture she liked best was of the fourth mayor, Jane Larkett who had a serene smile and fuzzy black hair. Still, no one came. She heard no sounds from the hallway. Maybe they'd forgotten her. Lena went over to the closed door in the right-hand wall. She pulled it open and saw stairs going up. Maybe, while she waited, she'd just see where they went. She started upward. At the top of the first flight was a closed door. Carefully... She opened it. She saw another hallway and more closed doors. Okay, is anyone else nervous for her? Because I am. She shut the door and kept going. Her footsteps sounded loud on the wood. And she was afraid someone would hear her and come and scold her. I would be too. No doubt she was not supposed to be here. But no one came. And she climbed on passing another closed door. The gathering hall was the only building in Ember with these three stories. She had always wanted to stand on its roof and look out at the city. Maybe from there it would be possible to see beyond the city, into the unknown regions. If the bright city of her drawings really did exist, it would be out there somewhere. At the top of the stairs, she came to a door marked Roof, and she pushed it open. Chilly air brushed against her skin. She was outside. Ahead of her was a flat gravel surface, and about 10 paces away she could see the high wall of the clock tower. She went to the edge of the roof. From there, she could see the whole of Ember. Directly below was Harkin Square, where people were moving this way and that, all of them appearing from this top-down view more round than tall. Beyond Harkin Square, the lighted windows of the buildings made checkered lines, yellow and black, row after row in all directions. She tried to see farther across the unknown regions, but she couldn't. At the edges of the city, the lights were so far away that they made a kind of haze. She could see nothing beyond them but blackness. She heard a shout from the square below. Look, came a small but piercing voice. Someone on the roof. She saw a few people stop and look up. Who is it? What's she doing up there? Someone cried. More people gathered until a crowd was standing on the steps of the gathering hall. They see me, Lena thought, and it made her laugh. 
She waved at the crowd and did a few steps from the Bugfoot scurry dance, which she'd learned on Cloving Square Dance Day. And they laughed and shouted some more. Then the door behind her burst open, and a huge guard with a bushy black beard was suddenly running toward her. Halt! he shouted, though she wasn't going anywhere. He grabbed her by the arm. What are you doing here? I was just curious, said Lena in her most innocent voice. I wanted to see the city from the roof. She read the guard's name badge, and it said, Reg Stabmark, Chief Guard. Curiosity leads to trouble, said Reg Stabmark, and he peered down at the crowd. You have caused a commotion. He pulled her toward the door and hustled her down all three flights of stairs. When they came out into the waiting room, Barton Snood was standing there, looking flustered, his jaw twitching from side to side. And next to him was the mayor. A child causing trouble, Mayor Cole said to the, sorry, Mayor Cole said the chief guard. The mayor glared at her. I recall your face from assignment day. Shame, disgracing yourself and your new job. I didn't mean to cause trouble, said Lena. I was looking for you so I could deliver a message. Shall we put her in the prison room for a day or two, asked the chief guard. The mayor frowned. He pondered a moment. What is the message, he said, and he bent down so that Lena could speak into his ear. She noticed that he smelled a little like overcooked turnips. Delivery at eight, Lena whispered from Looper. The mayor smiled a tight little smile and he turned to the guard. Just a child's antics, he said. We'll let it go this time. From now on, he said to Lena, behave yourself. Yes, Mr. Mayor, said Lena. And you, said the mayor, turning to the assistant guard and shaking a thick finger at him. Watch visitors much more carefully. Barton Snood blinked and nodded. Lena ran for the door. Outside, the small crowd was still standing by the steps. A few of them cheered as Lena came out. Others frowned at her and muttered words like mischief, silliness, and show off. Lena felt embarrassed suddenly. She hadn't meant to show off. She hurried past out onto Otterwell Street and started to run. She didn't see Dune, who was among those watching her. He had been on his way home from his first day in the pipeworks when he'd come across the cluster of people gazing up at the roof of the gathering hall and laughing. He was tired and chilly. The bottoms of his pants legs were all wet and mud clung to his shoes and smeared his hands. When he raised his eyes and saw the small figure next to the clock tower, he realized right away that it was Lena. He saw her raise her arm and wave and hop about, and for a second he wondered what it would be like to be up there, looking out over the whole city, laughing and waving. When Lena came down, he wanted to speak to her, but he knew he was filthy looking and that she would ask him questions he didn't want to answer. So he turned away, walking fast, he headed for home. And that's the end of chapter two. And I will come back with chapter three. Thanks for listening. Just love this book.